There's no substitute for good business intelligence, and that's exactly what the WinAD database delivers to NCAA administrators. We pulled well over 100 pouring rights contracts from the WinAD database, and in the next four minutes, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about NCAA pouring rights deals, including market trends, trends in contract structure, and how savvy departments are structuring their pouring rights agreements. There are four key value drivers in pouring rights deals, the first of which is commissions, or revenue sharing. This is the most significant source of revenue for NCAA athletic departments. Of the 100 plus pouring rights deals that we studied, less than 15% of those deals had yearly commission minimums, and of that group, all were university-wide agreements. We did find one athletics exclusive pouring rights deal with a Southland school that did include commission minimum. You always want to aim for a commission minimum as a safety net for your revenue stream for your program. The second key value driver in pouring rights deals are sponsorship rights fees and sponsorship leverage amounts. The rights fees are the guaranteed annual income from the deal, while the sponsorship leverage amounts are monies that are mutually beneficial for marketing, branding, and promotional initiatives. Here's a quick breakdown by subdivision of the average rights fees and sponsorship leverage amounts for Coke and Pepsi in Division 1. Interestingly, Coke pays more in guaranteed rights fees at the FBS and Division I AAA level, while Pepsi averages a higher guaranteed amount for the FCS. Statistically, Coke leads the way in terms of monies for mutually beneficial marketing activities in the form of sponsorship leverage amounts. This screen is also a great example of the variability in the market and how you can use the transparency afforded by WinAD to gain a negotiating advantage in your next pouring rights contract. A third key value driver for pouring rights deals are signing bonuses. In our analysis, we only saw three athletic department deals, two Power 5 programs and one FCS institution, which had signing bonuses, so they are relatively rare. We also saw 14 university-wide deals, which again is less than 10% of our sample set. Of that group, 11 were Coke and three were Pepsi. Signing bonuses fall into a category of something you should probably always ask for and try to get even if statistically it's unlikely. The fourth key value driver are special revenue, which is kind of a catch-all category and certainly an opportunity to squeeze extra value into the deal. In these situations, the vendor is required to buy things like season tickets, club seats, and suites, or make donations to athletic booster clubs or other student programs on campus. As an example, one Mac school receives $5,000 annually from Pepsi for their booster club. Another example of special revenue is donations to school programs like recycling, student affairs, or even summer camps. For example, one ACC program receives $10,000 annually from Pepsi for recycling programs, and a Mountain West program receives $50,000 annually from Coke for student affairs programs. Other ways to add value to pouring rights deals are requiring facility and dining hall improvements, as well as technology upgrades, things like credit and debit card readers on the vending machines. Some additional intel from the WinAD database. Savvy programs often carve out isotonic beverages as part of their pouring rights deal to create competition and increase deal value. Carving out isotonic beverages means that you can bid that portion of the deal out separately to establish an alternate revenue stream, or create enhanced competition for that portion of the deal to sweeten the pot in the negotiation. Another opportunity for carve-outs are permitted exception beverages, things like coffee, tea, smoothies, milkshake. If you can carve out these beverages and create enhanced competition for that portion of the deal, you're likely to increase the aggregate value of your next pouring rights contract. Performance bonuses are actually increasing in prevalence. As an example, one Big 12 program gets a $20,000 bonus from their pouring rights provider if their football team finishes the season ranked in any major poll. A final example of progressive deal structure is negotiating customized extension and termination options. Typically, renewal language is at the mutual agreement of both parties. One of the things that we're starting to see is that the renewal decision is at the sole discretion of the school. Pouring rights partners have shown a willingness to pay renewal bonuses or re-signing bonuses to schools that choose to extend an agreement. This can significantly increase guaranteed fees and essentially is found money if you decide to exercise the extension option. The WinAD database gives you access to thousands of pages of current vendor deals for Division 1 and Division Division II programs. With market transparency comes negotiating leverage, and we'd love to talk with you further to see if WinAD could be of assistance to your athletic department.